Okay, so we were talking about color separation and we got to this step on our poster where we had isolated out the cyans and we told the computer to be in bitmap mode under image mode. So it's really important to understand RGB mode, CMYK mode, grayscale, and then bitmap. The problem is I want this to look like blue ink, not black ink, even though this would be the end step for a printer because a printer just needs to know where to print and you put the inks in that the printer uses. But I want it to show up as blue. So what I have to do is now convert it back to grayscale so I can add color. And when I do that, it's gonna ask for a size ratio. I want it one to one. So every pixel that's here is, is a pixel for grayscale. Even though, even though it's grayscale now, there are no gray pixels. It's still bitmap, only black and white. Now I can simply choose the white using the magic wand, having contiguous unchecked. I can select all the whites and as long as I unlock my background, right, I can delete them. So now there's only black pixels. And because it's grayscale and because I deleted with anti-alias checked, it's softened very, very, very gently. It's softened the edges where it erased, which is actually kind of a good thing. Now I want to replace all of that color with cyan. So the easiest way to do that is to just use a layer style and do a color overlay and then choose. You can use Pantone, you can use the full color scale, but since we're doing it not for professional printing here, we're doing it just so it looks good, I can pick the color I want. So I'm gonna pick a pretty strong blue at 100%. And it's not showing. Why not? Because I have to go, though it looks gray now instead of black, I have to go to image mode and I have to change it from grayscale back to CMYK color. And now I can actually replace it with a color. I thought it might show up just because it was a layer style, but there we go. Why CMYK instead of RGB? It's because I'm going to want to mix these in channels later, and I don't want to see colors that wouldn't be able to print. So now this is the cyan layer, and then I have to do it with each other channel, the magenta, the yellow, the black, and then I can layer them all up. So that is what my action does. This is how you can uh, imitate it just using a Photoshop filter. I'll take a combined layer of my poster here. I'll duplicate it. And then I'll run a filter under filter gallery. Use the halftone pattern. Set my settings. Say OK. I can invert it if I want. And then I can take its opacity down. And I can play with different layer styles. I think what's most helpful is to actually delete all the white. Select it with the magic wand with contiguous turned off, delete it all. And then I can go to layer styles and just replace the color of the dots with let's say blue. So now I have a blue halftone over everything. And because it's a layer, I can just erase it where I don't want it, or I can move that, that layer down through the image. You know, so it doesn't affect the type, but maybe it affects the background and the spot illustration. It doesn't affect the spot illustration, but affects the background. I can also fill it with a gradient. So that's an imitation of the technique. But if you want to play with the technique for real,
I recommend using the action that I prepare for you. So let me show you what that does one more time. It's going to go to the beginning. This is just my JPEG. So on this flattened duplicate, I will save this as a copy of whatever I want to play with the color separations. I'll call it CMYK. I'll replace my old one. I need to go to Window and Actions. Now you won't have actions like this already. So what we need to do is get you my color, my Carl color separations actions. And then once you have it, you just select it like a VHS tape. You don't want to open it up because these are all the commands that are in it that tell you exactly what it's doing. But if you mess with that, then you'll mess up its sequence. So you just want to pick the, the VHS tape off the shelf and then hit play. And then it will run through play. So I'm going to stop recording quickly and just show you how you can get to the Dropbox and how you can load it onto your computer. So once you have run those CMYK actions, it will give you a separate folder or a separate file with all of the layers. And then you can decide how you want to arrange them. I kind of like what it did to our campus logo here. But I can take them individually and move them into place. I have them intentionally um, offset so that I have to hand place them. Because I think hand placing it is cool. Reminds me of making silk screens by hand. And Photoshop can, can snap them into into line pretty easily and you'll, you'll see those Gaussian roses. So now that you have that, that file, I can close all the ones that made it. I can close the and not save the individual ones that made it up. But then I can go back to my original poster and I can put all of these CMYK layers into a folder. I'll call that folder group CMYK. And then I can drag that file out and drag that folder onto my original. And because I output it at, my action outputs a professional printing quality, which is 300, and I'm doing it at 350, I can then I do this intentionally too. I then can grow it and make it fit because this is another way of having to hand place it. And the benefit of that is it actually softens the, the halftone dots a little bit, which were bit mapped, right? And really, really harsh. So I can use my, my arrow keys and kind of nudge it right into place. There I'm lining it up pretty well. But you'll get that just slight difference in placement. Which if you're going for a vintage effect like this, can be really nice. Okay, then once it's placed, I hit return. But I get to decide the opacity of each one. I can erase it away where I, where I don't want it. I can play with the layer styles of it. There's just a lot I can do. But it gives a nice kind of finish to my image. And then if I want to bring in my line art again, all I have to do is open up my Photoshop, which has all of that. 
So let me do that quick in this video. So this is how to play with CMYK separation as a finishing technique. Notice what it helps with. I think it helped with the overall visual texture and interest, but I don't like what it did to the type. So what I'm going to do is from my Photoshop file, I'm going to take all the finished type elements. including the vectors. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to put them in a folder just like I did with the CMYK. And then I'm going to drag this out, drag that folder in, and then move it on top and place it. Zoom in and nudge it with my arrow keys. Just get it right on. Nice. See how that really cleans up the logo? but you still have those kind of vintage effects happening. Now I can do the same thing with my spot illustration. This is why we, we save it with all the vector stuff. We need all of these, these attributes. They come in really, really handy. So now I'm gonna make a group starting with my color holds and all of my different spot illustration things. Put them into a, a group, call it the spot illustration, then move that on and then place it. And I can nudge it different ways. I can even offset it a little bit. I have the black half tones on top of it, which is kind of nice. And then if I don't like those blacks on top, I can always cut them down. Maybe take their opacity down a little bit. They're 80% now. So it's just ways to tinker and play with your finishing techniques. Really using all the tools you have at your disposal. Now I want to save this as a copy. Remember, don't overwrite because CMYK really has to simplify. But these are options for you to play with now that you understand CMYK color separation. Remember you have those slides to remind you and they can really give an informed finish to your work while really understanding the history of printing that your digital art design is fitting into. All right, fantastic.